Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Poverty Princess. I decided to upload this video before I do my Amazon unboxing. I have been promising this video for several days, so I finished up my notes today and am ready to do this video. This is things to do during isolation, whether you're self-isolating or are under a lockdown, um, stay at home, different names for it, or perhaps maybe you're not feeling well and you are in a quarantine situation maybe. These are things that you can do during isolation that will keep you occupied and Keep your mind focused and stay sane. Probably the most important thing, stay sane. So, let me get right into it. I chose this one for the very first one because I am in this category too. Tackle the hard cleaning or repair jobs that you have put off due to time being tired, working long hours, or just not motivated to do them. Specifically, I'm talking about cleaning your refrigerator, your oven, if you don't have a self-cleaning oven, um, maybe repairing a hole in the wall that you just put a picture over, maybe you have some chip paint you need to um, basically repaint, things that you know you need to do, but you have been putting off, and now is as good a time as any to tackle them. Um, also, if you are with your family and you are home together, um, and you are considering perhaps maybe changing a color in a room, why not have a paint party with your whole family? You can have your kids involved with that and turn it into a family activity and it could also be fun. A nice way to do something together as a family. Um, as far as cleaning refrigerator and things go, yeah, I'm in that category too. I am guilty of doing it. So I can vouch. I still have not lifted up the top of my oven and actually cleaned out pieces of rusted um, the burner oh, pans. So I do need to do that. I do need to clean out my refrigerator too. So I'm just like everyone else. Will I do them? Well, now that I'm talking about them, yes. I will see if I could get at least one of the three jobs done before Easter cleaning out the oven at least most important because I will be using my oven so now is a good time as any to tackle those jobs that you know need to be done but you just get putting off now you have time to do them that can also include things outside cleaning up your yard getting leaves out of the drains um, that can also include maybe trimming some bushes and um, vines, things that have gotten crazy, you know, since last year. Little things that you know you should do but haven't done them. Now's a good time to get them done. Number two, organize your closet, your drawers, and even your cupboards. Now I did this actually back in the winter and I was actually fall into the winter I did this where I organized clothing. Some things were a little bigger on me when I was a little heavier. I basically got all those items together and I put them in a vacuum sealed bag. I have them in my basement. 
I'm not going to get rid of them because I don't know that I may not gain the weight back down the road. Although my goal is to not to. But still, I have no reason to get rid of them. So I have these clothes all washed, clean, and in vacuum bags. I also went through things that I no longer wore. And basically, little by little, when I was going to the food pantry, I was donating clothing um, to them. So I felt good at the time about bringing something to them. Even though I was taking something with me, I was also in my own way giving back. Um, it's not a bad idea now that you have time to go through things. And if you honestly have not worn it in a year, put it aside. And then from the pile of things that you haven't worn in a year, decide. Is there someone you could give them to who will use them? Or are you better off just donating them to maybe a women's shelter or, you know, Goodwill, Salvation Army, Volunteers of America. Make sure they're cleaned. Um, if there's any rips that they are sewn, buttons are attached. Keep everything stored so that when things change, you can donate them and someone else can have the benefit of them. It also frees up your closet and your drawers. Um, it's just good to get rid of clutter. You would think it might be not much fun, but when you're done with it, it is quite an accomplishment and you do feel good. I've done it. I can vouch. It, it is good feeling to let go of things that are just taking up space in your room, in your home. And as for cupboards, well, I've pretty much had mine organized for a while. When I lived upstairs, my oldest granddaughter, who was really good at organization, she has very good organizational skills, um, she took it upon herself to organize my cupboards for me. And it may get a little out of hand, but I usually get in there and reorder things. I bring things up from the basement. I take things down to the basement. So I do, for the most part, know what is in my cupboards. And if I'm going to be making certain meals, what I need to bring up, what I have, what I may need to purchase. It's a good way to keep on top of things so you know what you have to make meals and also will save you time and money because you would be surprised at things that you may have way in the back of your cupboard. I found things that I was surprised I had that I had forgotten I bought. It really is such a good idea to organize your, your cupboards and that. Um, it, it just makes meal prep and shopping lists so much easier because you have a perfect clue of what you have, what you can use, what you might need. Are you using the last of this? Do you need to replenish it? It's just such a big help, guys. And if you have things organized like a Lazy Susan, like vegetables and seasonings and things, it just makes life so much easier when you know at your fingertips where everything is. Number three. Is something that many people forget to do but again now is as good a time as any to tackle it sort through paperwork and by paperwork I mean receipts I mean medical records results you may have I mean any type of documents bank statements um, doctor visit statements. I mean anything pertaining to financial, to health, utilities, credit cards. Organize your paperwork. I personally save anything that is financial or financial related. Um, I save them. They can be very, very important. Tax records included. They say you should save them for up to seven years. I would go even a little bit longer and say nine. You just never know. 
and having a separate box or file system for them is perfect. Um, medical records, if you have test results and things, it's always a good idea to hang on to them as well. Again, you can have a simple filing system, folders and such for them. Hang on to them too. You never know when they may come in handy. If records are over 10 years old, I think it's safe to say with things being um, digitalized now that you could probably shred them. But check and make sure first that you do have access to your records online. And if those records are available online, then by all means, shred them. You don't need to keep them anymore. Old utility payments from the previous year or two, you can shred them. Credit card payments, you may want to hang on to a few months worth of payments in the beginning of the new year, but if you pay on them regularly each month, you usually have an accurate record of what you owe, what you have paid. So I would say if you have payment stubs from a year ago, it's safe to shred them, but you may want to hang on to payments you may be making now, currently. If you are on any type of benefits, it's always important, I feel, to hang on to any paperwork you may receive for at least two years. Um, very important if you're awarded your SSI or SSDI, any type of benefits, to hang on to that paperwork. Even if you've had it from 10, 12, however long ago, years ago, always important to hang on to those type of things because you never know, again, when you may need it. Hang on to your leases, hang on to your rent receipts. Um, always good to keep them for at least a year and then the following year you could shred them. Number four, make scrapbooks. You don't need to order scrapbooks online. You can use paper scraps, cardboard, ribbon, a paper puncher to make scrapbooks. If you have a printer and have any type of um, an ink program set up like I do, for example, with HP, I can print up to 100 things a month. They could be documents, they can be pictures, photos, 4x6, 8x10, 5x7, as long as I have the paper. I can print them. It's a good way to clear photos out of your phone's memory, clear photos off of your Facebook, photos that you, you know, want to share. Maybe you want to see them in a book for memory's sake. Maybe you want to send them to family members. Um, but making scrapbooks, and you can do this with kids as well, is a nice way to have a hard copy of some of your favorite pictures. I enjoy looking back through photo albums and scrapbooks on occasion of good times and good memories. Nothing wrong with that. You can also um, use an app like freeprints.com where each month you're able to print up like a certain amount of photos for a small shipping fee. That's another way if you don't have access to a printer to, again, print up some of your favorite photos. Always good to clear these photos out of your phone's memory. Um, and, you know, you can display them on your wall. You may not be able to go to a store to get stickers and things for scrapbooking, but if you have access to a printer, you can go on Pinterest.com an amazing array of paper that can be printed up. Beautiful designs, um, stickers, all you need is Mod Podge, and you can make a beautiful, absolutely beautiful um, themed scrapbook or several. It's a great project to do for yourself. Maybe you want to make memory books for someone as a gift. Mother's Day is coming up. Um, in May, Father's Day comes up in June, then you have, you know, the summer holidays, birthdays, 
So now is a wonderful time to get creative and make some keepsake scrapbooks. All kind of ideas and paper and printables for free are available on Pinterest.com. You, you can go crazy. All you need to do is find your particular style and theme and the amount of free printables. I love Pinterest. I can't say enough about Pinterest. It is such a wonderful, inspiring site. Bookmark Pinterest because it's wonderful. I love it. Number five. Play around with new hairstyles, makeup, hair colors. There are several cute apps that you can uh, get through the Apple App Store and Android. And I have several listed down below, links for them. Um, a few I found that seem to be popular, Modiface, Beautylish, and Perfect365. And yes, guys, you can use them as well. Maybe you're curious if you should or shouldn't grow that mustache, or you're wondering how would you look with some blonde tips. Play around with these apps as well. You can have not only a lot of fun with it, but also honestly get a feel for how you may want to freshen up your look. And you'll get an idea of how you look with new colors, new styles, and then if you decide to actually take that plunge when you can get to a hairdresser again you already know pretty much how it's going to look on you and you could confidently go in there and say I want this so check them out they're a lot of fun don't forget now is as good a time as any to throw away any outdated expired makeup including mascara lipstick foundation, everything, eyeshadow, and while you're at it, give your brushes and combs a good cleaning as well, wipe down your hair dryer, wipe down your flat iron, not a good idea just to do a reboot, a revamp, get rid of everything cool, because all you're doing is putting bacteria and using products that are not 100% up to par because they're past their freshness date. So get rid of them, toss them. Number six, try some new recipe. Uh, try some new recipes. Explore other foods you may have always wanted to try. I've always wanted to try Indian food. Um, I haven't gotten the chance to actually go to an Indian restaurant. I wanted to up in Mosbear. I have actually looked at a few, shall we say, light Indian recipes that I would like to try down the road. One of which being curry chicken, a light version just to see if I would like, you know, that type of food. So, yes, now is as good a time as any to try different recipes. And you can look on Pinterest for recipe inspiration allrecipes.com Facebook has recipe groups um, there's a, a variety of sites you can go to Taste of Home um, Rachel Ray you can google it and spend hours checking out different sites don't forget also recipes that you can get from um, pasta websites as well from um, sauce sites as well, like Hunt's, um, products that you buy and use in recipes. Go on their websites, check and see. Many of them have recipes as well that you can try. So don't be afraid to spend an hour or two looking and maybe you'll find some new things that, you know, you think you would like to try, think your family would like. Give them a whirl. You won't know until you try. If, like many folks, money is very, very tight, or like me and Ronnie at the moment, non-existent, there are options to watch free movies and shows when you don't have money for Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, or Disney. Number one, obviously, is YouTube. 
there's a variety of movies on YouTube you can watch. As long as you have internet, they're free. There is several other options that are completely free. All you need to do is either go on their website or for ease and convenience you can install the app on your cell phone, on a tablet, or your laptop. And you can watch movies, you can create playlists, and watch, again, movies for free. Tubi TV. Tubi TV updates their um, movie catalog frequently. You can make yourself watch lists. And they get some really good movies. Some maybe older, you know, horror movies or dramas from like 70s, perhaps 80s. And so they have a really, I find, interesting catalog of movies. Again, that they do update pretty frequently. Um, so it's a really cool app. Definitely check it out. Links are down below. Crackle.com Crackle is another site that rotates their movies very frequently. Again, you can also set up a watch list for yourself. And um, they have a pretty good variety, I think, of movies as well. Popcorn Flicks is another free movie site. Um, many of their movies are similar, though, to what is on Crackle. And with Popcorn Flicks, you may find a variety of B movies, especially horror movies. So if you are a horror buff, um, Popcorn Flicks may appeal to you because there are a variety of mm, B horror movies, you know, not necessarily some well-known ones that have been in theaters years ago, some lesser-known ones that maybe were just put on cable channels or um, streamed on Netflix and such. So do check Popcorn Flicks out as well. Another site that has free movies periodically and you don't need to purchase if you only are going on there to watch their free movies is Voodoo. V-U-D-U. They do change their movies. I don't know how frequently. Um, but again, that is an option as well to watch free movies. You can also listen to free podcasts. There is a gazillion podcasts out there at the moment. Everything from politics to medical to gossip about movie stores and things, sports, um, cooking, true crime, anything you could think of, there is probably a podcast for it. And podcasts you can listen to for free, links below for some really good sites. iHeart.com you can check out a variety of free podcasts on there. TuneIn.com, another site that I myself actually use for several podcasts that I like to listen to on occasion. You can also use podcast.google.com and podcast.com. Again, they are free. Um, you can, I believe, sign up maybe for email notifications of when new episodes perhaps are uploaded, um, depending on the particular sites. Um, again, they're free. Check them out. Always another good source of keeping keeping your mind busy. You know. Visit your local library's website. Now I know libraries are shut down during this. So today I spend a little bit of time on my local library site and I realized that as long as you have your library card you can still basically borrow audiobooks, you can borrow ebooks, and you can use things like Rosetta Stone if you want to try brushing up on new language. Um, so don't be afraid to also go on your local library site as well and see what they have. As I said, you can use many of their online resources even though the building itself is physically closed. So definitely check that out. 
there's probably something for everyone in your family. Um, many libraries also have different activities going on for kids, so definitely stay in touch, check out what they post and what they have. If you have children at home with you, the library of course is a wonderful source for activities as well. Number eight is maintain your routines. If you got up at a certain time each day and ate breakfast at a certain time, walked your dog, went for a jog, as long as you practice social distancing, you should still be able to maintain your routines as much as you can. Maintaining your normal routines gives your life some sense of naturalness, normalcy. It is good for your self-esteem and good for your psyche to do that that is familiar for you. If a few jogs around the block is what you do, again, by all means, be safe, but go do it. If going for a walk in the woods each day is your thing, again, do it. Just be mindful of who may be around you and take precautions. It is important to maintain routines also if you have children at home with you. They still need to learn. Many schools have adapted online learning for kids, even high school age kids, so they are still on track to graduate. And you don't want your kids being up all night just because they're not physically going to school being up all night, yapping to friends, FaceTiming, playing video games, watching movies, you still want to keep your kids on some type of routine. They may not physically be going to school, but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't get enough sleep, shouldn't get up at a set time, and should not spend so many hours doing school-related activities. Weekends are different, very important that everybody tries to maintain a normal routine. If you do laundry on a Thursday, do laundry on a Thursday. If Friday night is pizza night, keep Friday night as pizza night. Try to maintain comforting routine. Number nine, rediscover your passion. Do things that you love. Get re-inspired. Now, when I say re rediscover your passion, I'm not talking about in a romantic sense. Although, however, not a bad idea for folks who at one point are working different shifts and doing different things and who probably honestly don't have much interaction with each other. Now is probably a good time to let the kids stay up late on a Friday night, let them watch movies, let them have ice cream, have a date night, dress up, break out that bottle of champagne or wine you have hidden for a special occasion, make a dinner together that the two of you love, and reconnect as a couple. And you might think, well, you're single, you're not involved with anyone, why are you saying that? because common sense will tell me and any other person in a relationship or not that so many people don't actually sit and talk to their partners, to their husbands, to their wives. And now if one or both people are home more, now's as good a time as any to maturely work on any little issues before they spiral out of control and become a big issue. And just because you can't go anywhere doesn't mean that you can't have a date night. Now, the other side of Rediscover Your Passion is if you played an instrument but put it in a closet because of job constraints and things, now is the time to bring it back out and focus on your love of music and what you enjoyed about that instrument in the first place. Maybe you painted, 
Maybe you did sculpture, sketching, photography. Now is as good a time as any to get back into doing the things that you love. And if you really enjoy it that much, figure out a way when you do go back to work. Or you will be working more hours to fit that into your time and your life. People do subconsciously so make time for things that are important to them. Remember that. Number 10, learn something new. Can be anything at all. Maybe you always wondered about a certain country. Start reading, looking up, learn as much as you can about that country. Maybe you always wondered how to knit. Read up on it, study some videos, give yourself an idea, see if you would or wouldn't like to do that. Maybe you wanted to look into your background. If you go through your local library, you can actually start using some free resources to do a genealogy search. Learning about your history is definitely a wonderful thing to do during a time like this. And you may learn some pleasant surprises and find out some amazing things about some of your ancestors. I actually want to do that at some point down the road myself. So that is actually on my list of things to do. I think it will be fun just to see what I find out. Don't forget to have fun. If you are with your family during this time, have a family movie night. Have a family game night. Make a playlist of comedies, movies, something for each person in your family. And even if you're by yourself, maybe pick a certain actor. Make a playlist of silly movies that that person has made that you may like. I would skip the horror and things of that nature. I would go more for right now a night of comedy, laughter, even romance. You can find on some of the apps I previously mentioned different movies, comedies, romances, Make yourself a big bowl of popcorn, get out that ice cream, and just kick back and laugh. I find I wake up in a better mood the next day when I watch something funny the night before. Be a comedian or just a silly movie. Something that relaxes you and puts you in a good mood. At least for me, it seems to help me have a better night's sleep. I guess because your mind is just relaxed and just occupied on laughing. Laughter is very, very important right now. We're bombarded with so much negativity and serious stuff that it's good to stop it and switch to a different theme. Romance, comedy, you can't go wrong. Number 12. If you have children, or teenagers with you, now is as good a time as any to teach them some important life skills that they don't learn in school. Teach them to cook basic, simple meals. Teach them how to make a few breakfasts, a few dinners, a few things for lunch. Teach them simple things. Someday they will be on their own. And it can run a lot of money to buy microwave food, and it definitely runs a lot of money to eat out. So teach your kids how to fend for themselves in the kitchen. Very good to know. Teach them to sew. Sew a tear in a shirt. Attach a button. Replace a zipper. Our society is disposable. Everything that we use is disposable. I remember my grandfather taking a TV when uh, a bulb blew out in it or something 
to a TV repair shop and not having a TV for a few days until it was delivered back to us repaired. Those days are over. We are a disposable society, but you don't have to be that way with everything. A lot of times people just, you know, throw away a shirt because there's a little hole in it, which is stupid. You can sew it. You may have a hole in your jeans. You can put a little patch on it. It's so much easier and in the long run saves money. So teach your kids to sew. Teach your kids to balance a checkbook. Teach them how to set up a budget. Show them what it costs to run your home every month on average. Many kids know their parents' jobs but probably don't even know what their parents make, what the bills cost. They know nothing about it except that the internet is on, the lights are on, they have hot water, and they have clean clothes. But they don't know what these bills actually cost. Take the time to sit with them and show them. Show them how you pay these bills. Show them how to budget money, what your mortgage costs, what your rent may be, what your car payment might be. Maybe you're paying off a student loan. Show your kids that. Also, teach them about credit, the good and bad of credit. All important things kids do not learn in school. You're there, you're with them. Who better to learn from than their own family? I think it's a very practical, useful thing. Since schools don't have practical courses like home ec and that anymore, learning to make things on your own and learning these basic life skills, I think, are important. How many men don't know how to change a tire nowadays? That is so sad. Like, seriously, you really shouldn't know how to do it. And if you don't, you can watch a YouTube video about it. So guys, you may want to actually get out there with your sons and show them how to change a tire because you would be surprised the number of young people that don't know anything about a car other than putting the key in the ignition, turning it on, and what gas station to go to to get gas. Number 13, make some new friends. Well, you might be thinking, well, how am I going to make some new friends? You can join a group on Facebook if you have a shared interest, maybe something that you'd like to do. There is a whole bunch of different groups on Facebook that you can join. Maybe you're a crafter and just want to get inspiration from other people and find a group that you can also share your own creations. Maybe you like to cook. Or a certain type of cooking and you can share recipes with other people. You can develop a rapport with people and perhaps become friends with them on Facebook. There is a variety of groups out there and definitely worth looking into for someone who may have, you know, very small circle at the moment. Number 14, Grow Garden. You may be in an apartment, not have a yard, not have a balcony or a porch, anything to put pots, and you may think, well, how can I grow a garden? I'm sharing a link to a really good article that I printed up, and it tells you how you can grow some vegetables without soil in water and jars. Some require sunlight, some require more darker areas, but you can essentially grow some things in an apartment that you can use in cooking. Very informative article. Link is down below. Check it out. If you do have a area of your home apartment that is sunny, you can most certainly grow some herbs to use in cooking. You may be able to even grow yourself, say, just, you know, one pepper plant, one tomato plant. You would be surprised. A whole bunch of different ideas online for people who are in apartments, 
half limited space, but yet still can grow some things indoors. Look on Pinterest. Also, just Google it. Um, YouTube, there is also videos as well. You would be surprised. But do check out the article if you honestly, truly don't have any available space and you'll be pleasantly surprised what you can do in your kitchen with jars and water. And if you can actually garden, by all means do. Being able to grow your own vegetables and fruit perhaps saves you going to the supermarket, saves you paying money. It's a great feeling to be able to go out in the garden, pick things for a meal. Wonderful feeling. Gardening is relaxing and gardening is also amazing. An amazing feeling to watch things grow. I developed a profound respect for plants and even more of a respect for nature having actually worked a garden with my son and harvesting the bounty afterwards it's a wonderful feeling so gardening of any type or growing something that you can nourish yourself with by all means do if you can number 15 maintain or develop your own spiritual path if you are a Buddhist and you like to do whatever it is that Buddhist people chant and you have a set time of the day to do that, then by all means maintain that. I like to meditate certain evenings, do burn candles, incense, I continue to do so. Maybe you like to do different meditations on different Bible verses and read a few passages each evening, then by all means do that. Whatever keeps you grounded and helps you here is very important to maintain. There comes a point after learning whatever facts you need to know for the day, there comes a point where you need to turn that off, get away from it, and just focus on the positive. Whatever your practice is, maintaining it helps you stay focused and helps you stay positive. I mean, we're all human. We're all going to have a bad day. We're all going to have a depressed day. We are going to feel variety of emotions going through this. I have, you have, we will. Countless times over. And that is perfectly okay. But a belief or a sense of calm and purpose and positivity that you can get through each day and that things are going to get better is very important to have to develop, and if you have that, to maintain it. I can even go so far as to say that even if you don't have a strong spiritual um, belief, now is as good a time as any to look into different religions, look into different belief systems and perhaps something will click with you, interest you. Anything positive that keeps you grounded and at least lets you feel good about yourself and your ability to get through each day right now is good. Positivity attracts more positivity. And that is a good thing, guys. It's important we nourish our body, but it's also important that we nourish our mind. And any type of belief or positivity, spiritual path, 
that brings you calm and brings you peace and at least makes you feel positive and uplifts you is a good thing. You have that, keep at it. If you're looking for it, I hope you find it. And when you do, develop it and nurture it and maintain it. And yes, guys, it is okay to give yourself a cheat day, to binge watch your favorite show, to stay in pajamas and not do much, to not even be on social media, not return a message, just let your family and friends know if you are all keeping tabs on each other that you're going to take a day away so they don't worry about you. It is okay to have a I don't feel like doing anything and I don't want to do anything and I want to have junk pay. Just remember, don't let it become a habit, but it's okay to give yourself that cheat day occasionally. Well guys, I hope you found this video interesting and I hope you may have found some usefulness out of it. I truly hope each and every one of you is doing well and staying safe you're all in my thoughts and prayers i know this is a hard time for everyone guys but a thought popped in my mind the other day our grandparents all of my age group our grandparents went through a war they survived a depression they survived different things crises in their lives and they got through things. Our parents, the wages, they got by, they survived. When my mom was in high school, polio and smallpox were very big. My mom in elementary school lost a best friend of hers to polio. People survived health scares in the past, they got through them. We can too. So don't for a moment think that we won't get through this. We will. I am just like everyone else. I believe that sometimes, you know, it is frustrating. Pain the ass. I get angry. I have depressed moments. Yes, it's normal to run that gamut. But, you know, our families were survivors. Hey we can be too. If you like this video guys, please give it a big thumbs up and if you haven't already, hit my subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I will see you on the next one. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. Bye.